uh, Obama recently appeared on. I believe it was like Pod Save uh, America. Yeah, yeah. Super. I heard some of the clip from it that was making its way around, but where he essentially, yeah. you know, he literally, uh, he literally says verbatim, you know, moneyed interest and lobby. They didn't oh, play funny. any fucking influence. I mean, I'm like, what? Yeah. Way to have your like, I'm not a crook moment, dude. Say it's like you just, you know, you just spelled it out for everybody. It's like, why would you say that if it wasn't obviously what was happening? Yeah. You want me to? Uh, yeah, go ahead and pull up that clip if we have this it. Is, this is pretty crazy, in my opinion. Uh. Because this is, uh, you know, Obama has now been kind of going on a tour of making this exact point, which we'll address after we play this clip. But it's just kind of funny that this is clearly something Obama's insecure about. You know, he clearly is aware of the 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 people online that think he did not go far enough, far enough left in his uh, eight years as president and didn't accomplish enough. And he's clearly kind of, uh, you know, having this defensive reaction to that play out in his recent media appearances. So this is pretty funny. Uh, and even Elizabeth in, 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 our, uh, in how we talk about this stuff publicly. Most of the time when I didn't get something progressive done while I was president, it wasn't because uh, I was getting donations from some special interest or corporation. It wasn't because, you know, there were a bunch of lobbyists whispering in my ear. It was because... Actually, it, it kind of was. But. Yeah, tell that to Citigroup. <laughs> Basically staffed his entire cabinet. Yeah. Votes. And Sorry, because I didn't, I, I didn't have votes. Oh. And I, I, I think sometimes we... we. You didn't have a supermajority when you came into office? Apparently the failure not. of a Democratic or pro, uh, uh, progressive president... Uh, uh, did you see that he waffled on? He didn't know whether to call himself a democratic or a progressive president. Yeah, <laughs> he was like he was like he stumbled over his. That was funny. Uh, not getting something done to somehow he uh, he and hopefully at some point she is being influenced by these other folks when in fact it's just that we don't yet have the votes and the clout. Yeah, corruption does not exist. By the way, for anyone watching this, that's uh, you know may think to. May believe it to be obvious, you know, the influence of huge cash donations on candidates. That's actually not a uh, influence whatsoever. The yeah, it, believe money. it or not, Obama actually really <laughs> wanted to do all of those things uh, that he had all the power to do when he first took office in 2009 uh, before the midterms. Uh, he wanted to do all those things and he had all the votes to do. Oh, oh, wait, he had all the votes to do it. He just yep. he didn't have the political will. He, he had too many people from Citigroup telling him, yeah. telling him that uh, we need to bail out Wall Street and we need to kick everybody out of their homes if they haven't paid for their mortgage. And they signed the dotted line and let's push this on to the uh, American homeowner. And we also have to stay in Iraq and Afghanistan and start like all these new wars. Oh, yeah. Start a war with a start a shadow war in Libya. <laughs> get involved in Syria. You know, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty hilarious to see Obama just, you know, taking on this, you know, talking point or not talking point, a reality, essentially, that, uh, you know, he he squandered his first two years with a progressive uh, or with a supermajority, rather. You know, he had Democratic control over the Senate and the House, and then he lost that supermajority. Obama acts like it's our fault, you know, the voters' fault that that supermajority was lost, that he, you know, lost control of uh, that, you know, the House in his second or I forget if he lost the the House or the Senate in the after the midterms. But either oh, way, they lost the House by like a bad amount. Okay. I think it was the first time that the Republicans had taken the House in a good long while, if I remember correctly. Well, he, Obama, Barack, and Michelle uh, would have you believe that it was voters' fault that happened because progressives didn't show up to you know affirm the agenda or whatever. But in reality, we all know that it's Obama's fault. If he had excited people and done what he said he was going to do in his first two years, he probably would have been rewarded with uh you know a super with a continued control over the Congress. As it is, he disappointed people. He didn't end the wars. He didn't do anything. He uh, basically turned all of this hype that was the Obama presidency. I'm sure you remember it when Obama got elected. It seemed like, uh, you know, a new dawn in this country. It seemed like a whole new age was upon us. You know, it seemed like uh, Obama was going to come in like a, you know, a lion and save the, you know, country from this buffoon that was George Bush and get us out of this mess. And then, you know, two years later, not really much has changed. You know, I mean, we have a more competent 
man at the wheel, but I mean, essentially the people's economic conditions are little better. We're still in these wars. Uh, so yeah, of course people weren't going to be enthused and uh, excited to come out and vote for down the ballot candidates to, so Obama can keep doing little to nothing with his power. Like uh, this Not is to mention you at that point, you still had, you had the tea party, which was coming with a, like, yeah, obviously a fake, you know, but it was at least uh, something, right? They were they were energizing people. Yeah. They were they were coming, with, you know. And this was during the time of like radical, weird, evangelical resurgence. Um, yep. But essentially, um, um, it reminds me a lot of that uh, Hillary Clinton piece that uh, was published in the Atlantic last week. That was fucking hilarious. Uh, I don't know if you saw it. Uh, but it was just like the headline was Hillary Clinton says she was right all along. And it just kind of highlights this de the Democratic Party leadership's inability to learn any fucking lesson that would like point to their fault being their own. Right. It's like Nancy Pelosi, like can't handle any kind of pushback like we saw in that Wolf Blitzer interview that we commented on yesterday. You know, uh, uh, oh, Barack Obama can't stand to grapple with the fact that one, Joe Biden might actually be more popular than he is right now. And two that um you know his leg legacy is a total shambles and that it uh trump's election is a direct repudiation of everything that he represented as a president uh at his neoliberal corporatism um yep indeed I, I mean and it'll be uh you know interesting to see the tenor he strikes over the next couple of years because he really has just waded into total you know sellout territory it's not like he really even seems to be in the realm of politics anymore you know now he's in netflix and he's coming out with a book soon. I, I don't know. It just seems like the Obamas have kind of turned themselves into this whole... Well, like, I mean, it was obvious as soon as he part. left office and he started going island hopping with Richard Branson. You remember when yeah. all those photographs came out? Oh, yeah, yeah. And started giving speeches like not even a couple months later to Wall Street and stuff. Like, it's crazy that... And he did that too while Hillary Clinton was running, you know? So uh, it's pretty insane that all that was uh, happening and the, how ha poorly he handled his transition out of office and into the private sector because he just made it so obvious that he was like in it for the money and that that's what his you know i mean obviously all the people he served during his presidency are then going to line up to you know pay him millions of dollars to give them speeches and do these kind of ridiculous favors for them as soon as he's out of office that's how corruption works and that's why it's so crazy that he's he's basically telling uh you know americans to deny what their eyes are showing them which is clear and obvious corruption as it has always existed in politics this isn't anything new and that's what's so ridiculous when uh, you know these academic liberals and such try to uh, you know, find these workarounds to deny the existence of corruption in our politics when it's like, do you really expect people to not realize uh, what's going on? Because it's it's pretty obvious, you know, like you said, when Citigroup uh, sends you a list of who they want you to put on your cabinet and you follow it uh, verbatim or uh, when you're taking money from all kinds of industries. I mean, Obama was, that was something that people uh, didn't really talk about at the time, but now it's so obvious. It's like, yeah, he was running on a progressive message, but it's not like he was ever uh, Bernie Sanders style grassroots fundraising. No, he was always no, taking, he was always taking money. He was Obama's big. Oh, 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 he was he took more money from Wall Street than Mitt Romney. Yeah, yeah, and I think he was even getting more than Hillary that very election cycle, despite being painted as the more progressive candidate. You know, Hillary was kind of seen as the establishment tool as she is, and yeah, Obama was kind of seen as the insurgent progressive who was kind of fighting out or trying to you know beat his way into the establishment. Well, he certainly, I mean, he certainly fronted that way while he was running yeah. in uh, the 2007, 2008 like primary period, and which is why I think it, it was so important. Uh, and I think the the establishment underestimated the power that it would have when Bernie Sanders did swear off corporate fundraising. You know, that was just something that they considered so uh, obvious, so baked into the cake of, of politics in America that uh, when Bernie was just like, uh, no, that's corruption. Uh, you and know, that's the real legacy of Bernie Sanders. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. The differentiation that he made between actual progressives who don't take corporate PAC money and fund off of uh, these leeches and, uh, you know, candidates like Pete Buttigieg and Kamala Harris that just, you know, line up at the trough of Silicon Valley and Wall Street to- And um, an effective litmus test because we all found out where Elizabeth Warren's heart lied when she ran out of cash.